out of, because of all this foam that's on the outside. And every now and again, sort of a, a rock will smash a window or yeah. come in. And, and the water's coming in through the letterbox. There was a door at that time down the end. It had a letterbox in it. Yeah. And it's coming in. But in the same vista, looking at that, look, taking this in, there's Fred crouching down behind a desk and, and a bit of the windowsill that was there. He's soaking wet. And, he's, and I then say, what? And he's got the phone. <laughs> he has a landline <laughs> phone. He said, what have you done? He says, I'm finding my missus because... I can't get my bike. I'm going to be late. Oh no! It's yeah, right, yeah. Oh, get out! Come out Hang on, hang on. Yeah. So, so yeah, we, we we got got out, and and indeed, what it what it turned out to be, there's lots of argument. You know, the, the North Circular was shut for ten days because it completely drowned it. The the, the volumes of water were, were enormous, but in essence, it's that there are three reservoirs over at Heathrow, and they're sort of in tiers. So as the lower one gets to whatever level, the next one tops it up, and, and these three reses over by Heathrow, they supply through a 60 inch, you know, five foot main, basically everybody north of the Thames. Their water comes right. apparently from those three reservoirs. Yeah, yeah. So it's tremendous forces pumping it along. Yeah. And that pipe basically failed and blew up right. that late that night, no, about midnight, on um, the 6th of March, 1999. Oh, and no. Yeah. Drowned the North Circular completely, to say yeah. shut for 10 days. And it's interesting afterwards seeing so many pumps, because there's all these pumps mm. pumping out this vast amount of water the pipes running for hundreds of yards from the roof of the calf you could see up the river brink because where, where you've got the north circular running parallel with it just on the north side mm. a few hundred yards is the river brink which is like a storm drain so mm. as you look along up towards Anger lane from the roof of the building you can see <laughs> three of these hundreds yeah. and hundreds of pumps and they're great big pipes coming out of the, these pumps up, up yeah, yeah 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 yeah. Uh, and again, that's an amusing tale with, with those pumps because apparently it took them ages to find them. They're using yeah. fire brigade pumps, which are you know, about this sort of size, mm. uh, and they couldn't find them. Uh, and they brought they brought pumps from up in the north of England and all the rest of it. Yeah. And of course, yeah. what had happened is that this was a Thames water burst, one of their pipes, and it's a few years after it. The it, you know Thames Water used to look after um, not just drinking water and sewage. It used to look after the rivers and canals and that. Yeah, yeah. But after being privatised, they just looked after water. So, so rivers weren't their responsibility anymore. Uh, so afterwards, it's only, only afterwards they find that <laughs> the old Thames Water river stuff. I think it was all up at Brentford. Where they got hundreds of giant pumps, but nobody yeah. thought to contact them. Instead, water companies, rather than river people, were being contacted all over the country to get their pumps there. Oh man, <laughs> and they, yeah. And the right stuff just up the road. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, always the way, isn't it? Always the exactly. way. Exactly. Well, we're living it now, aren't we? With with the uh, yeah. COVID as well. We, let's have a test and trace system. Oh, we yeah. haven't got any laboratories to test it yet, but that's how, all going how, how is the, how is the lockdown treating the business then? Well, same, same as everybody else, I, not say everybody, but the same as the vast majority of us, pretty yeah. much a horror story. Yeah. But as a business, plainly, you're compelled to follow what I'll call the, the government pathways. You know, the, the, you do this, you do that. Yeah. Furlough this, you get um, that hours. So, yeah, we're, we're following that pathway and at the moment, as you might well be aware. Mm. They're speaking in November, so at the moment we're, we're just doing takeaway Monday yeah. to Friday in, in the mornings, and that kind of serves the, the, the Park Royal mm. and all the buildings, the, the area around us, and all the building. building. You can't you can't have people on site gathering and admiring motors, let alone well, even building. even at two meters. No, you can't. You can't. No, not at the moment. No, no, not at the moment. You can't. You can't have that at all. That's weird because they've got Starbucks open and all that. And you can go in there. You can't sit down, but obviously you can go and have a coffee and and um, 
and all that. But anyway, it's it. Well, look, I'm hoping that I don't think it's going to reopen in December, but um, hopefully it does, and um, I can come down there and and have a look look around again because I, I came there a few years ago. Um, I was working at a factory nearby somewhere and uh, I, I came down I think it was a daytime there wasn't much going on there was a few Harleys outside and stuff but I was just I was just walking along looking at them and, and this guy came out and he was the owner of the bike and that's one thing I've always like liked about bikers bikers will talk to you no matter who you are you know what color you are what race you are don't matter if you're a biker you're part of our team group tribe, whatever you want to say where do you think that comes from what, what do you think that's about well it's a, uh, 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 the 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 uh, this is speaking with the, the, let's say the benefit or the misguided perhaps uh, thinking mm. i don't know of, of age and it's, it's certainly not something that um as a as a youngster go oh i must have a motorbike because mm. It, it, I've arrived at this over years. I, I, I love bikes. I love cars, and, and, and I've had lots of both, and I've successfully destroyed a goodly number of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But hey ho, um, but certainly it seems to me that in our, particularly perhaps in our urban environment you can find that adrenaline it, you know it's been clamped down more and more with um, uh, camera systems for for speeding and you know ANPRs and all the rest of it but with a bike over the years you, you could find that adrenaline you, you could push the machine yeah with a car you, you, you're taking gigantic risks in respect of getting caught and making a major mess up. Whereas on a bike, if you mess up, typically you're hurting yourself, not particularly hurting other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, see, you, you, you can, you could do a lot. Um, effectively, it's doing daft things, basically, whether it's mm. speed, wheelies, the rest of it, on, on, on a bike that you mm. can't really do on a motor on, in, in a car. Yeah, yeah. To really find the, I say the edge, that thrill, that whoa, edge yeah. in a mo in a car, you've got to be going something, and and you need the roads to do that. Yeah. yeah. And in our urban setting, we haven't really got that. Mm. So coming back to that which you asked, on a bike, you are very very exposed to that danger of messing up. Yeah. That's part of the where the adrenaline comes from that you know getting to the edge and, ooh, and, ooh, yeah. and like, yeah. feeling in your stomach that that's adrenaline it's a drug yeah. it gets addictive and, and and typically it seems to me that if you're an addict you like to mix with other addicts and anybody who shows a bit of interest in your addiction yeah oh, man i'm a you know here's another one yeah. Yeah. my cigarette but but it is it, you know, adrenaline is a drug it is yeah. addictive the same as this stuff alcohol etc etc yeah, yeah, yeah and once it's in you once you've had a taste for it you, you want more and, and and it seems to me you want to share it so anybody sh shows that bit of interest in that in this case the one you've described yes yeah, a harley so yeah. it, it's not a sports bike but mm. nonetheless he's exposed to effectively the same risk as someone riding an r1 in, yeah. in the environments that we, we typically find ourselves in, in in urban environments yeah 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 yeah. So, what are you riding at the moment, or what are you driving at the moment? Well, I've hardly driven for a long, long time. Again, more because of circumstance of urban living, and yeah, I've got a motorbike. And we'll come to that in a moment. But mm. living so close to the calf, um, where I live, yes, over the years, there, there's parking restrictions in the street. Yeah. certain hours and all the rest of it yeah. so cars get harder and harder to yeah. live to be able to live with basically yeah they're effectively being designed out of our urban settings but a yeah. motorbike i can stick here stick there you've got more scope you parking yeah. it away as it were yeah so 
um, the bike I've got is a Triumph Street, sorry, Triumph 765 Street Triple. So it's a new generation of the three cylinder, what they call yeah. a naked, yeah. naked machine mm. that fits me a treat. The, the ergonomics, the, the power and whatnot. Mm. Wouldn't particularly want to go touring on it, but for no. cruising around bits and bobs of London, it, it, it is ideal. Absolutely yeah, ideal. Yeah. Yeah. In, ter in terms of cars, you know, I've, I've had what perhaps today would be called classic cars, like old British cars or 1950s cars, mm. and had quite a lot of American cars over the years, mm. and um, and and love them. But the, the opportunity to use or indulge with them just mm. isn't isn't as it once was, and certainly yeah. isn't as it once was. Now we're in this sort of pandemic circumstance. You, know, you used to go to car shows and all the rest of it, you know, in the muddy field, <laughs> done, done all that, and thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. But you know, it's not 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 my agenda now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I started to collect classic cars. Uh, give me a second and just shut this window because seems to be a lot of noise outside. Um, I I started to um, collect classic cars. My wife's got an old Mini, which her dad gave her for her. Uh, I think it was her 16th birthday. She's now 43. So we've had it a long time. I got hit by a lorry on the A10 on, in North London. Um, I got it repaired by a, a backstreet garage and, <laughs> and uh, did do a great job. Then I went down to a classic car rest restorer um, who said he could do everything on it perfect. And he didn't, he just welded over the rust and, and sent it back to me, spray painted. And I thought, oh, this is lovely. Um, and then years later, it started to rust again. So now it's, it's in the workshop. It's being stripped as we speak by me. Um, and I, I did a classic car restoration course a few years ago. See, what, what, you've, what you just described there, yes. I've been at that stage a number of times over the years yeah. Yeah. where set out to do this both yeah. both by ten cars and you know, and i'm quite competent at taking them apart yeah the, the real challenge is yet to face you i suspect and it's certainly certainly i've sold boxes of this and boxes of that because yeah. It, yeah it is it, it's not me but no top marks for setting out on the, on what you're up to there but uh yes fingers crossed it's interesting because i found out through the classic car restoration course now they teach you how to bend metal weld metal um, do all these things that you can restore a car with and, and eventually it came to the point where i thought you know what i don't like i don't like welding and i don't like machining and grinding down the metal and making it look pretty i just want to build stuff so what i mean by that is I like taking stuff apart. Uh, I like putting stuff back together, but I don't like the in-between. So what I've done is I've stripped the car down. It's only the engine left to, to, to take out. And my father-in-law, who's a, he's a Ferrari mechanic. Um, he's retired now, but he, he's, um, he's of Sicilian descent. So he, he, was, he was born and raised in, in Sicily. He learned how to do Ferraris over there. Um, he, 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 he still tunes carbs with his ears because now, now they should do it with machines, I think. But I'm hoping to have him on the show soon. But um, a lot of the Ferrari fraternity and, and indeed the Jaguar community know him. Um, but but um, he said to me, why are you stripping the engine out? And I said to him, because I want to rebuild the engine. He said, the engine don't need rebuilding. And I said to him, but I want a shiny new engine to go back in my shiny new body. And he's like, no, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. So he's a, he's a little bit old school like that. But um, I'm not going to listen to him. I'm going to strip the engine out. And then he's going to help me and teach me how to rebuild the engine. That's, <laughs> that's the plan. Um, but the workshop downstairs is, is work in progress. So in my mind, what I've got is a mixture of old school workshop meets Harry Potter okay okay but like yeah. i want i want when i open that garage door i want people to say i want to sit down and have a cup of tea in there whilst you're working away or building something uh, or i want to help you do something you know 
Um, so, so that's where I am at the moment with it. I haven't succeeded because everyone's given me all their stuff. So I've got my mum's sofa in there. I've got my dad's fridge in there. I've got, I've got everything in there at the moment. So eventually what I want is to build up a, a nice little classic car um, uh, workshop um, and, and have a few classic bikes sitting around that. I'm a British, I love the British bikes. I, like, I love the Nortons, I love the Triumphs. Um, my dad had a Triumph, is it Bonneville? Or? Yeah, Bonneville. Bonneville. Yeah, Bonneville. Yeah. Um, which he crashed in 1976. He wrapped it, I think it's 76 or 77, but he wrapped it around a lamppost, um, not far from where you are actually, in North London. And he ended up in hospital. He broke both his legs and both his arms and he never rode again. Mm. And that put me off for life. But mm. next year, I'm going to go out, I'm going to get my bike license and then I'm going to start collecting bikes as well because I do love them. I do really love them. But, um, I mean, yeah, that's where we are at the moment. So I like building stuff and I like... Um, I like the old British stuff and it doesn't have to be big and powerful, you know? Um, yeah, I like the Jaguar XJS um, Lister, for example, with the six yeah, yeah, yeah. Year engine, you know? When I first met my father-in-law, for example, he had a garage in Shepherd's Bush um, and he was doing all the, he was doing the Queen's limousines, he was servicing them. Um, what's the guy from the Beatles, the guy that... Um, Ringo? No, the other one. John Lennon. John Lennon. John Lennon. He was doing John Lennon's cars and he was doing another guy's cars out of that group. But anyway, so I, I, the first time I met my father, I went in the garage and he was underneath a Lamborghini Contach. Mm -hmm. And all I could see was his legs. And my wife said to me, which my wife now, but she was my girlfriend at the time, she said, do you want to meet my dad? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, all right. He's been Sicilian. I was thinking, here we go. And... Um, so I went in there and he was, he was underneath, a, he, was, he had the Jaguar Lister in the corner on stands, he was doing something to, and he had a Lamborghini Contact which he was underneath. Um, and I thought, oh my God, this is amazing. This is such an amazing little garage. It was only a little garage in the arches, but it was amazing. And he, <laughs> over the years, we've been going to car shows and stuff. Um, he's a Ferrari man, he loves Ferrari, he loves Jaguars. Um, he doesn't like Porsches, especially the older stuff. And I, I, I'm a Porsche man. I love mm -hmm. Porsche. I love BMW. I love German cars. So um, we'll see what happens. I'll have to get him on the podcast. But, um, it'd, be, it'd be nice for him to join me and come down to the Ace Cafe and just spend some time there as well. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. Hopefully we're not in the lockdown for too much longer. And mm -hmm. we, we, can, we can enjoy... The, these pastimes you know because it's it's not very good at the moment um so when when enthusiasts come down to to the to the uh, ace cafe do you do you hang out with them do you do you try and go out and see what's because i'd be i'd be twitching the bloody blinds all the time or, or the curtains yeah. <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly it um it, it's a dramatic change this lockdown that we've had yeah. this year absolutely dramatic change yeah. because we're not hosting clearly the, not been hosting at times anybody then at other times far reduced and social distancing etc etc yeah. so um not been to the cafe anything like i, I was prior to this pandemic yeah. but certainly in in the, in the years since we started it's in essence i'll be at the cafe on a daily basis yeah a and there's always something turning up that wow what's that never seen one of those before yeah. or, or and it, it could be from whether it's someone driven from um or or ridden from japan or it, it's extraordinary that the, 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 the vehicles and people that have come along yeah. And the first, the first bit I'd say is you're drawn to the motor, drawn to what, whatever that vehicle is. Might be. Huh. Yeah. Never I've seen one like that before. It's yeah, yeah, a trick yeah. set of wheels on it, or, or whatever it is. Mm. That, that's the interest. But it's it, the, the real the real privilege is the being getting in. I would say the engaging in in conversation with whomever it is that has that vehicle. And at times it's like, oh my god, complete fruitcake, but yeah. fantastic for it. Yeah. Um, 
uh, and others their experience with stuff. Um, yeah. and it's been a real, real, real treat thus far. That yeah. we're in strange, challenging times at present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so any bike or car that you've always wanted to own and oh never goodness. had. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I know this going to be a long there's list. Loads it? Of them. There's loads of them. Yeah, it, it, it's like it, it's it's. Yeah, I, I, I've got I've got um, more t-shirts than I need, and <laughs> but I can store them with relative ease. Yeah. And, and, you know, I've I've got um, a, a t-shirt that it it looks kind of like a grey, like various shades of grey. Yeah. My wife. You go for it every, from time to time. The pause it. Ah, yeah. not that. It, it, it's my stray catch T-shirt <laughs> from 1981. I know it, what it is, but you can't see anything on it because yeah. it's all washed out. But yeah, and and, and, and if I could, you know, if I had the space and the money, I, I, I'd be exactly the same. I've no doubt with, with bikes and cars. Yeah, one of them. I love one of them. And 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 sort of thinking on that a bit further. The kind of stuff that I can't, I, I think I really enjoy is stuff that looks to me as being built for a purpose. Yes. So, yeah. as much as I say, um, a motorbike or a car for that matter, mm. um, I'll, use, I'll use Lotus. Yeah. Colin Chapman, the yeah. guy who founded Lotus, yeah. he, I'm told, started work at the Ace as a youngster, not in a calf, but in the workshops. There's a motor okay. workshops down there at that time. Yeah. A huge estate. He started work there and got very good at doing cylinder heads. And those workshops back in that period immediately following World War Two, they, 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 there's also a, a car dealership there. Yeah. And the workshops and the then owner were into their motor racing. Okay. And I can't think the names of who brought their cars there to be tuned and serviced now off, off the top of my head at all. Yeah. But certainly, as I say, Colin Chapman, I'm told, was one of the lads working there. Oh, wow. And he, he was very, very good at cylinder heads, apparently. Equally apparently is that eventually he got caught doing private work and was given the boot because <laughs> he's doing his own <laughs> jobs in there. I don't, I don't, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sure there's a, a bigger story to that, but it's post that he moves up to um, you know premises up, gets his own premises up. Um, North, actually, like, uh, uh, North Muswell, Muswell Hill. No, Muswell Hill oh, had his first okay. uh, up, up towards Muswell Hill. Yeah, sort of showrooms there. Yeah. And as that grew and he came up with these ideas and whatnot, then he had to get bigger premises, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But Lotus, Jim Clark, you know, my age group now, Jim Clark, you know, the yeah. green, the yellow, you know, the, uh, fantastic car. It's not a car for me because that's only a track thing. Yeah. But coming back to the sort of modern age, the little modern Lotus I yeah. think it's a fantastic looking thing, complete, you know, it's, it, it's a mental go-kart basically. I can yeah. see that it screams fun. Yes. <laughs> but I live here, I live, I live in North London. How the hell yeah. I, yeah. I, I, so, so as much as I love that modern little Lotus, mm -hmm. and I'd love to have one, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I might only ever get to use it twice a year or something to go to Brands Hatch, or it, yeah. it's, it's a non-starter and I don't have those, that's all wealth at all, anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but that's kind of illustrating. Oh, I'd love one of those, love one of those, and, and similarly with off-road motors or bikes. Yeah, there, yeah. There, there, there's fantastic, beautiful pieces of engineering aesthetic yeah. that just scream the purpose they're for, and, and and they immediately attract me and draw me to them. And that could be a Scooby, it could be the Yamaha R1M. It, yeah. it, you know the, the, the bike I've got at present it screams to me that it you know, should be doing wheelies all the time well I, yeah. I'm 63 there's lots <laughs> of cameras and I've yeah. been in hospital enough thank you very much but it looks like I could do it yeah. and would do it but 
So it's this 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 notion of of a design, and and that that design that screams that screams purpose, and that can yeah. be not just the sight, it's the sound, but that exhaust notes, engine sound, you know, the carbs and the injectors going and all that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, shopping this would be huge. Yeah, yeah, mine too, mine too. So, what do you think of electric cars then? And do you think well, they'll eliminate the classic car world? Do you, do you think they? Because a friend of mine's doing a, a Ford Mustang conversion to electric. Okay. Um, a Russian billionaire bought this company and he's launched. I think he's doing five hundred uh, GT Mustangs, um, and he's put electric motors in them. But he's redesigned the whole thing from scratch. Um, so it's not, it hasn't got anything classic about it apart from the shell, the body. Um, what do you think? What do you think of this electric car? Well, it, 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 technology continually moves and improves, hmm. gets better. But I'm not convinced that putting an electric motor into a, 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 a Mustang mm -hmm. On, uh, you know, when, when you say Mustang, is that an old Mustang or a modern? Uh, yeah, a modern 60s, yeah, 1960s, 60s, yeah. Mustang. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send I'll, you a link to the website. I'll send you a link. Yeah. It, it might, it might work, but my instinct is to say, well, it's like putting ice cream in a burger bun. It, <laughs> it, it, it's not quite. Yeah, yeah, I might like ice cream, and I like might like burgers, but I don't want my ice cream <laughs> in a burger bun. Yeah. It, it, it's a, I don't yeah. quite no, see I know, that. I know what you're yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Because there was some call to um, to cancel the London to Brighton veteran car run um, a few years back. Um, and I was like, where's that petition? When am I going to sign that petition to stop that from happening? That's absolute bollocks. Yeah. I, 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 whilst things will change and technology will move, the, the, there's... I say always. It's not quite the case, you know. One, once upon a time, horses were everywhere, and and, and if you look around London, you yeah. you, you, you presume you, you you know you like you know you London. You've got mews, what they call mews. Yeah? yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I'm I'm trying to think where 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 there's good examples of them. There's a mews somewhere sort of over Gloucester Roadway. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it now. But it's where Volkswagen had their, and they're still there. They've still got premises there. It is, if I'm not mistaken, it's their first dealership post Second World War. Yeah. And what they took was a little muse thing, and it's like an office place now. Yeah. And in there, you've got Morgan cars are still in there. Yeah. I'm trying to think who else. And and, and it's pretty locked down now. But there's a a bike business being established in, 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 in there, sort of alongside the Morgan bit. Yep. And I trust it's still there because this is pre-lockdown. Mm -hmm. And because of the bike thing, i had gone around there at some point and, and got yakking, I'll say, say with you, mm -hmm. um, and these were exotic machines in, in, in the dealership there. Mm -hmm. The name of the dealership, I can't remember that either for a minute. Um, but nonetheless, we were sort of reflecting on, on the huge expense of these particular bikes and looking at the muse and thinking, talking about electric and all the rest of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I, I made these observations, I'm make, making it about horses, because where we were in these muse, it's all cobbled. There weren't flats in there or anything. This is yeah. a muse that's still sort of motor based. But basically, mews are the um, backs of huge homes. So the front door to those homes are not yeah. in the mews. Yeah. It'd be the home, you know, homes of very, very wealthy people. Mm -hmm. And they were built with mews. And the mews was for the horse and carriage. Right. And, and that was around the back of the house. Oh, okay. So you've got, typically, you've got little, little narrow entrances in the mews onto the street. But once you get through the entranceway, it sort of opens up a bit. And that's where the, the horses and the hay and the carriages were. Uh, and, and as the motor vehicle came into being, 
those horses and carriages were, were replaced by the wealthy and yeah. they'd have their motor car in there and and the driver would look after it you know the chauffeur and what he'd look yeah. after and he might have a little room in the basement or something and then because of the first world war and the second world war and taxation yeah the the the, the, the wealthy were hammered yeah rightly so i argue that it should be the case today as well because yeah <laughs> uh, the circumstance we, we find ourselves yeah however the, the the those great big homes with their servants and their chauffeurs and the rest of it they, they all start to sort of fall in disrepair and then get turned into flats and gradually those um in that sort of post immediate post world war ii period yeah. nearly all the sort of um crime and fr thriller type films of the 50s yeah yeah, yeah. The, the baddies might do a job somewhere you know a, a raid on whatever and then the getaway cars and the chain them and and they'd always wind up at a muse dumping the stuff in the muse changing the clothes and you know, burn it in the uh, oil drum at yeah. the back of the muse and then, yeah. walk out. So, and, and then a few years on you get into the 60s and they become trendy places to have homes you turn the muse into a home and all that so we've seen this lifetime but the point of my relating this yeah. is, is over those years it's gone from horses for um that everybody knew everybody knew someone who works with a uh, with, with a horse and car it might yeah. be as a driver he might work in a stable might be a groom yeah, yeah. Taken a lot of years ago uh, and of course that has completely gone out of our cities except for people like I was once a mounted policeman riding the horse, um, yeah, yeah. and it's become, in essence, the you know horse ownership is be become the um, preserve really of the super rich. Yeah, you and I might go go and watch horse racing or bet on them or something, yeah. but they're actually owned by the super, the very very rich, and at the other end um of i say a financial spectrum those who can just about cobble up enough together to do you know, to keep a horse you know if you go to around the edges of london you see fields and paddocks in very poor condition and all that stood out there all on its own <laughs> yes. it's, it sounds a bit grotesque because some yeah one wants to have a horse but they can't really afford it and look after it in a way that perhaps it all but they're indulging their interest but once upon a time, it was everybody knew, and and I think it's quite probable, looking at that path of history, that our um, use of, it, of petrol, in particular, petrol engine stuff, mm. will, will go exactly the same way. Oh, don't say it will that. become the preserve of the very very wealthy who will have perhaps you know your Jay Leno's, you know, respectively. Yeah. I, I might yeah. add it, but one of all of them sort of stuff and then other ones that of us trying to hang on to in your, your a, a mini that that everything's been poured in to keep this wonderful mini going so yeah. there will be that interest that will remain but it'll be increasingly challenging to pursue and at the same time it won't be indulged in quite the same way as we do today you know, places like Bicester heritage yes. will, will perhaps get more and more significant to to, to what it, what it was five mm. or six years ago in mm. 20 years time Bicester heritage could well become a, 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 a must visit place for, for yeah. masses of people who are interested in the same way I'd suggest as Aintree or Epsom is is for your horses yeah I must admit I've been to Bicester and um, no, I haven't. You, you I, have, did you say? I haven't. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Really, I haven't. That's, that's on my list of things to do. So one of the things to do is to go to Bicester. Um, the other, the other thing I want to do is go to Duke of London. Have you heard of them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I know his dad. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. goodness me! He's the same age as it was us. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is shocking. Big uh, Lance, Lance McCormack. Lance used to work at um, Rolls Royce over at Park Royal, you know, um, body work and the rest of it. And, and his yeah. metal, they, they give him a lump of metal and a hammer, he'll turn it into a car. 
it's just oh, yeah. extraordinary talent of course that went years ago but he took he, he, he's sort of gone with that talent uh, and does sort of louis vuitton concourse type cars that you know here's a bucket of rust this was once a car yeah that he's your man but yeah. his boys are now you know, i haven't seen for ages now but he's it, it, it's his boys. Oh God, I'm trying to remember the names. It's terrible. It's I, I, I've been following them on Instagram. I, I should remember the son's name because he's got a yellow Range Rover. Right. Yeah, yeah. he's a flamboyant showman and all the rest of it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, they'll know their motors. Yeah, I'm hoping to get them on on at least go and see them anyway. Down at once all this lockdown's over. And then the other place I've heard of is quite good. Is Caffeine in the Machine? Up in, um, yeah, I've heard of that. I don't know much about that. that that's sort of a, a, a cafe place hosting yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. somewhere up in the Midlands, I think. Yeah, that's that's near Stratford upon Avon, I think. Somewhere, somewhere around there, yeah. somewhere. It'd be nice to get them them on 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 the podcast as well and just chat to them guys and see what they're doing. Well, um, one, one perhaps as well for you uh, uh, might mention the Vintage Hot Rod Association. Yeah, mentioned. yeah. But it's Brooklands. Yes. I'm not sure how to go about that particularly, because um, they're closed at the moment, as yeah. museums are. But Brooklands, um, and to give my saying is, my, my, most of us on, on this island don't realise, because we're not very good at PR, as it were, but yeah. Brooklands is the world's first purpose-built ra racetrack. Really? Okay, I didn't know that. And, and it's a fantastic museum, and it's there by luck and by the the hard work and diligence of, of the volunteers over the many, many years. Mm -hmm. But it has a fantastic story. And, and Brooklyn's opened, I think it was, oh, oh this is terrible, I can't remember the years, 1909, 1902. Yeah, it's a long time ago, isn't it? A long, long 1909, time. if I'm not mistaken. And and it's a quirk of legislation, a, a consequence of a legislation. Racing used to be on the road. So you'd have wealthy people nailing their motors, you know, London to Birmingham or yeah. wherever it was. And, and, of course, famously, you know, Paris to Peking and all, all that. And because of the carnage, not just amongst those competing, but by those watching, you know, it still happens in car parks and all the rest yeah. of it to this day, you know, and you know, leaning out and bang. Because of the, the, the accidents, the UK was the first nation to, sorry, Britain, as the, 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 with the parliament brought in laws to ban racing on the roads. Yeah. And, so the wealthy, in essence, then how can we race? We, we're going to go to France to race in their races, but how can, how can we have races here? So Brooklyn's was built as a direct consequence of that legislation. Right. And it opened, and this is dreadful not remembering the year, it opened the same year that the Isle of Man held its first TT for the bikes. Yeah. Now, the Isle of Man is not subject to the laws of the Parliament at Westminster. Right. Okay. The Isle of Man has, has its own. It's its. Uh, it's. Uh, I think it's called a Crown dependency. Mm -hmm. So this, they have the Queen still sovereign. Mm -hmm. but it's not Westminster that rules them. They have, the, they, they have their own Parliament, the Tinwall. They have their own uh, First Minister. I can't remember what they're called now. Oh yeah. goodness me, my brain has gone blank. But coincidentally. The Isle of Man realised, um, oh, that legislation handy. We'll have a T. <laughs> you can race here. Yeah. So they had racing and, and TT you know, back in the day. That would, that would include cars as well. But once Brooklyn's opened, they, they had to think about how to do it. You know, the, the bowl and all, all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and when it opened, it was set up. Because you know, how, how how do we run this? And they set it up and ran it in the same way that horse racing was run. So the wealthy mm. with their cars and racers, you know, they, they had their at their entrance and everybody else, the hoi ploi, they, they had a separate entrance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
but you know speed records and all the rest of it established there but not with, with the opening you then saw the establishing of the british racing drivers club mm -hmm. which is the people who run um pretty much formula one in uk to this day yeah you then had the establishing of the british motorcycle racing club known to this day as bemsey and they still run as a club they're the only club that run national motorcycle racing nationally okay you know, and, and different you know sort of classes yeah, yeah yeah and you also had because of the huge space at brooklyn's the establishing of brooklyn's aero club ah. the pioneers of four wheels two wheels and aircraft brooklyn's and the pioneer aviation over there um dh row yeah over at brooklyn's they got you know they built a shed as was his old shed and his first successful aircraft yes and with, with the advent of world war one that you know, the outro that became an aircraft factory which they yeah. then built just outside of brooklyn's mm -hmm. and you then have with that factory mm -hmm. massive aircraft production there and the sort of last aircraft to come out of it, if I'm not mistaken, was the Harrier jump jet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the last aircraft to come out of that factory before it closed yeah. and turned into a housing estate, basically. Right. But Concorde, so the museum today has aircraft of all sorts that came yeah. out of that factory. So there's no Spitfire, for instance, because Spitfires came out of, <clears throat> made by Supermarine and weren't made there but hawker hurricanes were wellington bombers were yeah uh vc 10s concord yeah uh, loads of stuff mm. so, so world war one industry back to racing in the 1930s and you have the um uh goodness me campbell land speed record near bluebird yeah. mm -hmm. well back back then you didn't have pits like we do today at races yeah because this was the only place to race at, at the time so people you, know, you you might be that really good engine builder and think oh these these um, rich boys need an engine builder and i'll set up a a shop so you, the old shed went up yeah. and uh, one of those cam campbell motor company mm -hmm. and that shed's still there yeah and of course he built his first bluebird in that shed and that car is in the national motor museum down at Bewley. ah okay, okay. It, yeah, it yeah, built, if i'm yeah. not mistaken up at brooklyn's yeah uh, and, and of course um as speeds got bigger and bigger that to sort of go to pendine mm -hmm. in in wales then they need to get somewhere bigger still so it's off to yeah. Daytona and then Bonneville, Daytona is in the beach. Mm -hmm. um, but World War Two really put the end, uh, ended Brooklyn's and its racing. And if you go on YouTube, you can look up Brooklyn's racing in the 1930s and you'll see cars going airborne and leaving the circuit and yeah, yeah, yeah. horrendous oh, crashing. Uh, did, did they reopen the circuit recently as well? They've, they've sort of got open bits. They've moved stuff around. They, the, the, the circuit finished as a, as a circuit yeah. in 1939. And that's because with the with advent of war, um, the factory just outside the circuit producing aircraft, the Wellington yeah. and the Hurricane, yeah. what they did is they cut the banking yeah. and enable aircraft to come out of the factory to use the start finish straight to fly off to dispersal, to, you know, to fly off to different stations. Uh, okay. okay. So post World War Two, the nations broke. There's yeah. no way they could repair that banking, mm -hmm. and that all came to a head. I think it's 1948 in it, when um, Britain hosts the first Formula One Grand Prix after World War Two. British drivers, British Racing Drivers Club, Brooklands. Yeah. Um, we can't race here. We've got to find somewhere else. So they scratch around and find an airfield up near Northampton, 
that's uh, redundant, not in use, can we have it? Yeah. Move up there, Silverstone. And that's where they've been ever since. Uh, okay, that's how Silverstone but came about, is it? That, that's how it came about, yes. Okay. Yes, so okay. we could host that, that first time because Brooklyn's couldn't. So from there on, Brooklyn sort of then fell into disrepair and whatnot. But a trust was set up donkeys years ago, and then it's been sort of volunteers. And it's basically two schools of volunteers down there's the bike volunteers, who I've come to know really rather well over the last yeah. few years. And then there's the car volunteers yeah. who help keep it all going. But yeah. But it's remarkable how one of the things we, we tr we've had the good fortune of travel, um, having gone to Daytona, you go to Daytona, the modern day um, speedway racetrack. Yeah. And of course, that opened in 1959, NASCAR racing and motorbike racing and all the rest of it. Yeah. But what they don't tell you is that um, Daytona is an exact copy of Brooklyn's. Oh really? Oh, I the yeah. banking, the gradients, and all the rest of it. Ah, okay, okay. They don't tell you that. Yeah. When you go to America, it's uh, funny, but hey. Yeah. Go. Well, you, you, um, I tell you what, you've dropped some interesting knowledge here today of, about historical facts on motor racing and and indeed aircraft. Um, I just want to. Um, well, at Brooklyn's, and one of the maddest motors to see, and it, yeah. I think it's one that holds the all-time Brooklyn's record, is a, 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 it's got a bonnet of about 12 foot long, yeah. if not longer. There's a huge aero engine. It, 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 you know, like uh, uh, the old 1930s Bentley? If you can picture yeah. one of them, but yeah. put on steroids and all aluminium, no yeah. front brakes, wheels that are sort of about this iron, about that wide, no front brakes, and this thing, I can't remember the speeds now, the, the all-time speed record there, about 160 mile an hour. Yeah. Uh, and on that circuit, which is banked, basically, I say either end, mm -hmm. then, it, then it goes flat. It goes over the river way, which obviously is softer ground. So when they laid the concrete for the in sections, um, on that, as you come off a bit, it's no longer there, but it dropped. So these cars would go airborne and you just cut with no no brakes and it's utterly mental when you look at it and it's got like a, a little, like a seat I'm sat in now, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they weren't very, very strong. They weren't into their stress analysis and all that back then, were they? Yeah, they were learning about um, uh, uh, health and safety. Yeah. yeah, they learned on the job, didn't they? Yeah. And then Volvo oh. came along and started educating everyone on the car yes. safety. God, yeah. completely nuts. But it's it, it, well worth a visit. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll have to go as soon as the lockdown's over. Definitely. Definitely to all of those. Um, I just want to... I've got, I've got four questions I want to ask you. This is um, We're coming up to the end of this fabulous podcast. And I... Um, can you remember your first car or your first bike? And have you still got I can it? certainly remember my first car. Yeah. The first car I owned was given me by my parents because I just crashed a motorbike, come out of hospital, and they didn't want me to have a motorbike. No, 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 I'll get you a car. And they got me a Mini. Ah, oh, that's nice. STM, I'm trying to remember the, the last bit. It's a it was that horrendous seventies colour that I call British Leyland beige. Ah, oh, they're coming yeah. out again. Them colours, <laughs> British Leyland beige. Yeah. And yes, I, I, I did lots of miles in, in that. We were crammed in with mates and all the rest of it, yeah. whizzing around. Seized the engine. Yeah. And that went. And I then got another motorbike. Oh, so you haven't got the mini anymore. No, not, not anymore. No, that's a long, long time ago. But that's, that's the first car that, I, that, that was mine, as it were. Yeah. My, my first bike was a Yamaha RD 250. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I would have been 17. I'm born in 57, so it's somewhere in the middle of the 70s. Mm -hmm. And um, by then, the L-plate law had come in, and it was too, limited to 250cc. Yeah. But the Japanese manufacturers had, had managed to 
get 250 cc to do just about 100 mile an hour so i had this two stroke 250 cc yeah that first bike i had for about three weeks i think something like that because i smashed it and put myself in hospital oh, then it was the uh, mini mm -hmm. and then once we covered that and then got another yamaha yeah but um my my, my first memories of exciting ride yeah in in, in a car was as a as a, as a kid I'm probably eight years old if that in a sit up and beg ford pop with no yeah. doors on it and no windows <laughs> and it was a, a farm right by where 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 i was living as a child the farm over the back and in the summer in particular the combines going around the field they go round yeah. and round and round and round and and you wind up with uh, the, the 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 crop left in the middle of the field mm. getting smaller and smaller and smaller so all the rabbits and the all the game is sort of trying to hide from the combines going in there yeah. Yeah, so yeah. in this car with <laughs> eight year old with shotgun this is, is complete nut madness yeah. looked at from today's perspective but it's perfectly normal yeah, yeah. thing in early 70s late 60s with kids in there with shotguns i wasn't a driver but the one of the farmer's sons was the driver of his car racing around the field yeah just by the combine as it got time to because more and more rabbits now trying to dart out and, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and racing around this thing bouncing around yeah. trying to load shotgun next <laughs> right I great fun that. but and, and but the car i learned to drive in I remember that as well, clear as a bell. It is um, Morris Thousand van, like the Morris Minor. Yes. But the van version of it. Oh, okay. And yeah. that was um, a car that you, the, the, the gear stick on that was, it, it was like, like as smooth as but going in the knife in butter. It was so easy, mm. so, so easy. Again, learn, learn to drive that around fields and whatnot. Okay, five five car or bike garage. What would you buy? What would you have? Unlimited value. Sorry, a five. What five cars would you own, or what five bikes would you own, if you had unlimited value on on unlimited resources of money? What would you buy? The but the bike, I, I I would love would be a Bruff Superior a la T. E. Lawrence. Yes. His Georgia Fifth, as it's called. Yeah. Bruff Superior, the nineteen thirties machine. Uh -huh. Um Love My Triumphs for sure. Yeah. Sixty one Bonneville. Yeah. And and I I, I guess it, it it would be um The, the, the something like the Panigale, modern modern Panigale, Ducati Panigale. Yes. Yeah, nice bike that. Um, I can't think. It is. Would you go off road? Would you have an off roader? Not, not really. I, I, I quite, I quite like the look of them. Again, the purpose and everything. But yeah. And and for me as well. I'm 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 not that young and I'm not that tall so getting on and off 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 road is, is quite a climb typically yeah. um five I can't afford a Norvin yeah that's a, a Vincent V twin engine in the Norton featherbed frame mm -hmm. and, and of course the hero biking hero who, who rides one of those is a cartoon character called Ogri uh -huh. Ogre, I don't think it is in the magazine anymore, but it always used to be in the inside cover mm -hmm. uh, of one of the one of the mags. And I've got a copy of a, uh, one blown up in front of me. Actually, you can't see it. Massive one, an Ogre cartoon strip um, where Ogre visits the Ace and with it, with his mates, and he's, there, there's Mitzi, Malcolm. You know, Malcolm's the idiot. Yes, the idiot. Ogre is the tough guy who charges everywhere on his thunderous bike. 
Mitzi's yeah. girlfriend and fishnets. Uh, uh, and then there's Kickstart, the little dog. <laughs> Ogri, look up Ogri. Yeah, um, I'll have a look. <laughs> uh, and, and he might be a good, 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 good guy to get to talk to the the, the cartoonist and Paul, um, Paul Semple. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, you got one more. One more, one, one more. more bike. One more bike. I guess it's the bike I've got now. I love it to bits. The yeah, I'm seven six five. Street triple, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, br brilliant little little set of wheels. Okay, cars. Fifty nine Cadillac. Yeah, two door had a great big fins and all the rest of it. Yeah. Going back to the sort of Brooklyn stuff, a Bentley. You know what the old Bentley boys that again you probably know the story there. Bent the, the Bentleys. Kept blowing up, blowing up. Now we're going to beat the, these Germans with their their silver arrows and you know the Audis yeah. and the Mercedes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they came up with uh, right. They put a blower on a Bentley. They won't last, but they'll go blooming fast. And it's, it was teamwork. Uh, and and so they came up with right. We'll put the Bentleys out. The uh, main competitor, the, the Germans, they will nail their cars just because they will. They, they won't like that at all. Yeah. Uh, 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 and then as they drop out, then we'll play the unblown ones. Uh, anyway, the game plan worked. Uh, and f quite famously for silly old fools like me, um, Bentley wiped the floor in those uh, uh, that immediate period before World War Two. Yeah. It all kind of—it's all kind of a bit like the Battle of Britain being played out with cars a few years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Britain. Yes. Britain, yeah. Love one of them. Love one of them. Yeah. Uh, 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 and as it says, it was like the, the Lotus. I can't think what it's called now. The little go kart Lotus. Elise. Elise. I think the, the Elise. The, the first. It all. Um, it looks quite modern, but it's, it's yeah, like a, almost old. like a Terminator sort of, sort of a transformer type of car. Oh, that's the yeah, I know which one you're talking. Elan, it's the Elan, isn't it? I'm, I really can't think. What they, what yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. So you'd have one of them. What else would you have? Thirty-two, thirty-two hot rod, thirty-two Ford. Yeah, man. Then now you're talking hot, yeah. hot rod. Yeah, and. Um, Any of the modern stuff take your fancy, like the McLaren? Well, that's, that's actually where I was at. It, it, it's the um, again. I'm not really sure of the models, and there there are differences between them. But the the big boys, the big boys modern Jags, and the big yeah. boys modern Astons. Again, that yeah. they they're, they're you know, monster motors and love them a bit. And then the uh, the uh, ultimate one, goodness knows what it goes like. But it's again back to Lotus, and I saw it earlier this year, which is an ele all electric car that is sort of like science fiction futuristic. Oh, yeah. yeah, I saw that at the Concourse of Elegance a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, like, yes, that's yeah. it. Yeah, completely, that's completely it. whack. Yeah, that absolutely stunning thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, how, much is that? how much is that car? That car's about oh, a million, wouldn't it? Something. Yeah, it, it's moonshot money. Isn't it? it's, yeah, it's serious <laughs> money, isn't it? You wouldn't even want to drive it, would you? No, but what an object! Just looking at it, it's like, wow, this is. Um, yeah, that is a machine. Nice machine. Absolutely yeah. stunning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so another question: You're going on a road trip, okay? Uh, who would you bring with you? And they could be dead or alive, and they could be famous. They could be a family member. Who would you go with? Who would you take with you? Jay Leno. <laughs> I thought you looked over there. I thought you were going to say I'm your face. My wife. My, my wife. <laughs> she's, she's out there somewhere. Yeah, no, yeah. Jay Leno. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting character. Very, very interesting. Isn't I, he? I had the very good fortune to meet him, and so thoroughly enjoy his company. Yeah, and, and met him basically on a parking lot. On a he's on a bike. I didn't know him from Adam. This is going back long. The first my first visit to America in yeah. two thousand six or something like that. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. At the West Coast at this bike thing. I've got to go to the bike thing in the bikes. 
and I got this bike thing with, with a mate and two yeah. of these old British bikes, and this bloke came, or his machine came trundling in, a Henderson in line four from, again, between the two world wars, and I've never seen one of them in the metal before. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I picked up this old thing, ching, 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 ching. Brilliant. And the bloke gets off, takes his helmet off, and everybody's sort of mobbing him. No idea who the fella is. I'd never heard his name before. Really? <laughs> at, at that time, this is 2006, remember? Yeah. Um, and, and he, I'm looking at the bike, and he see, saw the T-shirt I had on, which you know, needs to say Ace Cafe, here I am. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Brit abroad, isn't I? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. That I know that place. That, that, I don't know that place. That, that, that the egg and chips there. He, he made a quip that he that he knew about the cat. Hmm? Yeah, 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 so interesting. Yeah, I've never seen him. So get yakking with him, and he said, yeah, you, 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 "If you're into this, then you, you come back to my 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 my, my place. Oh, I'd love to. Love to. I've got I've got this. And he's got other ones that you might be interested in. Bloody yeah. Well, I'm with my wife and a friend. Oh, yeah, 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 come." Then. So then piled him in his car and followed him on his bike back to his um, sheds. What? And, and, and he shows around his stuff, as it were. Oh absolutely. my God, that must have been amazing. It was, a, it was a privilege, but the guy's absolute gentleman. Yeah. A great company. Yeah. And, um, well, they've elected Biden now, but I, I reckon he'd make a great president for, for, their, for their nation. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So yes, anything to trap him in in a vehicle with me. I'd love love to be on a road trip with Jay Leno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good company. You, you do get to know people when you're trapped in a vehicle with them. Definitely, yeah, I've, I've had yeah. that. I've had that before where I was trapped in a vehicle for three, four, five, six hours. Um, unfortunately, we were going to work and we were stuck on the M11 um, for about six hours. But um, I got to know this chap really well. But uh, I'd love to do some road trips across Europe, across the world, um, particularly in Turkey, because my parents are from Cyprus, Turkish Cypriots. I'd love to do some road trips across Turkey. Um, but I'm going to wait for my son to get a little bit older, because that's the person I would love to, to do it with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's only three and a half at the moment, but uh, he's, he's showing that avid interest in cars and motorcycles for sure. Um, all right, last question. I'm going to let you go. Um, if you could revive a bike or a car brand that has gone extinct. I'd be very, very wealthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, well, I don't know, I don't know, because the Russians bought TVR and it's still, it's still, oh, derelict, what a tragedy, it? yeah, yeah. It's still um, a factory, just got nothing in it, has it? Um, but well, what, what one would you go for? Who would you try and, um, I know which one I would go for, but I'll let you go first. I, I, I don't know. The, 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 I, I don't. I can't quite think of. Um, I'm trying Bristol. to think of British marks, as it were. Bristol, I'd go for. That's who I'd go for. So they're not around. Yeah, yeah. I, no. I'd go for. It. Yeah, I'd go for. Yeah, it. Oh, and the sure. reason is because I'm an aer aer I'm an aerospace engineer anyway, so I love aeronautical design and concepts. But uh, they're based on um, aircraft, aren't they? Yeah. Mostly, and they're such. A, it's such an elegant, beautiful um luxurious car um and it's a shame it's a shame they've gone under i didn't realize they'd gone under actually yeah, I, I, knew that, that, that I knew they were you know for, for, for forever been on on a knife's edge and realized that but i didn't realize they'd actually actually gone now, yeah they? i think i think it was about six or seven months ago they went under um i, I knew they were struggling because i went past their kensington uh yeah. showroom on corner, on yes place. yeah and I thought, oh, what's going on there? They're doing a refurb because it was all empty. Um, and then about a week later, I saw it online that they've gone bust. Okay. So, um, yeah, that would have no, been. I'll go with that. Beautifully, beautiful, elegant vehicles mm. that, that, that speak absolutely of performance. Sounds awful. Class, style. Mm. And, and it, it, it is a Brit, there's Britishness all wrapped up in it, in, 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 in that Vista. It's clearly British, it's clearly not Italian, it's not German, it's not American. No, 
Mm, mm, I guess that's why they went bust. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I think I think the business model was wrong. Probably. I don't know. I'm not an expert. If I was, I'd be I'd be rich. But, um, mm. Yeah. No. But uh, it's it's absolutely, honestly, been a pleasure talking to you today. Uh, I could talk to you for another three or four hours, but I've got another yeah. couple of podcasters waiting. Um, no. So. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the time you've spent with me today. And also, hopefully, in the future, we can meet face-to-face and do yeah. another yeah. podcast. Um, hopefully, um, we, you know, at the Ace Cafe or, or in my studio downstairs with my Harry Potter-style <laughs> uh, studio workshop kind of thing. But it, 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 it's, been, it's been a pleasure, honestly, mate. Um, real pleasure. And... and um, I'm glad you reached out to me and said, you know, you'd like to do this because I think the listeners will definitely love this. Uh, I'm not just talking about in the UK. I'm, I'm talking, you know, in America um, and and everywhere else. So, um, yeah, I'd just like to say thank you, Mark, for all your time and all uh, your uh, all your knowledge. My my, my privilege and um, good luck with the circumstances we're in now. And- Best wishes with, with, with the real podcast. Keep the yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send you um, a copy of it once it's edited so you can have a listen. Um, or indeed, you know, um, just subscribe or, or something to my channel and, and you'll get all the podcasts that I'm making today and in the future for sure. Um, but yeah, no, thank you, mate. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, honestly. Honestly, it's been a real pleasure speaking to you. All right. All the best. All right, mate. Take, take care. Have a good day. All right. See you later. Thank you. All right, mate. Bye.